Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Sunday Sit Down. I'm Reverend Phil Dickey, one of the pastors here on staff at White Rock United Methodist Church. Again, we're here in the basement. This is our second week to do this this new format, this new place to host the Sunday Sit Down. If you've never been to the Sit Down, it's a pre-worship conversation. We do this each week as kind of a, a way to get cozied up to get ready for worship. Um, I always joke that we just do it to test our uh, our technology, but it's more than that. There is a good theology and there's good opportunity to, to get us revved up and to be in conversation to get ready for worship. So, um, this week we are looking at study in our our, uh, our worship series on the discipleship plan here at White Rock, and um, we we've talked a little bit about the idea of what it means to live and to be present in our community, a little bit about um, worship, and then last week Krista came on to sit down and we talked kind of about this idea of serve, and it was not direct, right? I didn't really call it out that way, but that's a little bit of what was happening behind the scenes, and and this is wrapping up our our four quadrants of the discipleship plan, looking at study, and to me this is the most obvious part of discipleship, but that's, I think, because that's kind of how I'm wired. And that's uh, where I think I've grown the most in my discipleship is through study. And a big part of that has been because of my guest that I have on today, which is the Reverend Elizabeth Mosley. Hello. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. (laughs) Many of y'all know Elizabeth. Um, You may have bumped into her husband at one point or another, Neil Mosley, who was on staff here. Um, Elizabeth and I worked for many years together over at Highland Park and, uh, she was my boss for a while in the discipleship, um, department at Highland Park. And so that's really where a lot of my development and study really took place was, um, as I was growing and going through the ordination process, um, Elizabeth actually not only was becoming a really, really dear friend of mine, but also a bit of a mentor to me. Um, you stood with me at, when I was ordained. That's true. I was, did. Yeah. So that's really nice of you to say. Absolutely. <laughs> I never thought of myself as that. Totally. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I've never told you that. I think you and Neil both have been mentors to, to me and, and to Jesse, but, um, I think, as I said, a big part of how I've grown in my discipleship over the years has been through study. And again, it's natural to me, probably why I went to seminary. Not everybody goes to seminary and some people who go decide, I don't think I want to go to seminary, but like study for me is just, is just something I love. It's something that's, uh, I, I could do it all day long and sometimes to a fault, right? Like you, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, you know this, that sometimes I'll study things to death and not actually act on anything. But, um, I wanted to, to bring you into the conversation because again, we've, we, I think, I think I could say we have grown in the aspect of study in our discipleship because we've studied together. Yeah. And so we did a podcast together for three years um, where we studied scripture and we're actually about to launch another podcast. This is like a shameless plug for our, our own little podcast. It's, it's not shameless. Out. There we go. <laughs> totally. Totally. Um, and really what it is, is it's, it's studying the scripture together. And we talk a lot about when we do Bible studies and stuff around here too, that that I very much believe scripture was written to be read in community. And so through what we do through our podcast will be a lot of that, right? Yeah. Um, I'm talking a lot. Do you, you are talking I know, a lot, but that's okay. Which is very backwards from our podcast. Usually you talk way more. I know. Typically I do. So don't get used to this. If okay. you're going to tune into our podcast, this is not how it'll be. <laughs> no, I, I love this topic. I think it's, um, I mean, I think it's essential for discipleship and part of that is, and I love how y'all are kind of looking at four different ways of being a disciple um, and kind of highlighting those in your different worship experiences each week. But uh, I think the value of that is that you're able to uh, look at discipleship and realize that there are like multiple facets of what it means to be a disciple. Mm -hmm. And each one of them is really essential. But for me, I agree. Study is an essential part of being a disciple. Um, And I think that's like rooted in a lot of of different things. It's rooted in, I think, our, um, our, uh, uh, what's it called? <laughs> our, um, Not the Western quadrilateral. Well, but, it, it, but I was going to say theological our, task. What do they call it? Yeah, no, it's rooted in our tradition. There we thank go. you okay. of Methodism. I'll keep throwing words out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's rooted in the tradition of Methodism. Sure. Um, but I mean, I would argue it's rooted in Scripture itself, and Jesus models study for us and encourages us to study and yeah. to learn. Um, and so there's an emphasis then on knowing. Um, I think part of study is to, to know, right. Um, and not like in a definitive, you know, my study is now complete, but, sure. but just to, to lean into knowledge as a valuable part of what it means to be in a relationship with God. Yeah. Because think of how we're in a relationship with people. Yep. I mean, part of being in a relationship with someone is, is taking the time to get to know them. I mean, and that's, that's in another way, like, 
how we would talk about studying sure. someone. You right? We study them. We study their behaviors and their habits and their preferences. You yeah. know, we learn about them so that we can know them more, right. not fully, but more. Yeah. And that is what a real, you know, a huge part of what a relationship requires. So likewise with God, you know, our study of, of who God is and who God has created and called us to be and what that all means, you know, that's a way of knowing God more. Yeah. Um, again, not fully, sure. but, uh, but I just think that's essential. Yeah, not fully, meaning that like, even if we came to know all that there was intellectually about God, it still wouldn't reach the pinnacle of who God is, Correct. right? Like, our, yeah. not that our feeble minds could ever quite get there, you know, like we could always pursue that. And I think that's a great pursuit to do, but we'll, we'll never quite get there. But even when we do, like God still transcends beyond just the, the knowledge, the knowable aspect of our intellect. And there's something spiritual that moves beyond the intellect that, that the ironic thing is, I think you can study about that. <laughs> right. But it's not the same as actually experiencing that. Right. But, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I, like you, am certainly oriented towards study. Yep. I always had questions. I always enjoyed learning more about context of scripture mm -hmm. or about theological concepts. Um, you know, my parents were really encouraging of me always growing up to ask questions and um, and kind of not to take things at face value. Um, I mean, so much so that when I went to college, I majored in theology because I wanted to know more. Um, and so I spent four years literally studying God and studying humanity yeah, in that. light of our relationship to God. Um, and so I, I certainly just personally am oriented that way for sure. Um, not again, I would say not to the exclusion of knowing God in other ways, sure. experientially, yep. through worship, um, communally, through connection, uh, serving, right, through action. Um, but uh, but that's that's a big part, yeah. I think, for me, of my relationship with God. Well, and I think a big part of what study helps us with is we have, this is a tough thing to say, I think we, we ready ourselves for better experiences with God the more we study. And I, I think of we had Jack Levison on our old podcast one time talking about that. It seems like the Holy spirit is just this like spontaneous, like, you know, like you never know where the wind's going to blow kind of thing. Right. But he actually made the argument and I actually hope to have Jack on the sit down coming up. We're going to do a series on the Holy spirit. So, Good. Um, but he made the argument that in all actuality, the spirit more shows up whenever people are very intentional in what they're doing. And, and like, if you look at the, the Pentecost story, they were all together in a room and he said, those are the places that people would study together, you know? And like, so they were together studying when the big Pentecost experience mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. And you think of John Wesley's experience. He was yeah. at, you know, a meeting where they were studying the, Romans, right. not even the scripture, but studying Luther's, Luther's intro yeah. Yeah, yeah. to the scripture. And, uh, and that's where he had his heartwarming experience where yeah. the spirit gave him assurance of his own salvation. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think you're right. You know, there's an opening when we study, there's a humility, I think, to the act of studying, mm -hmm. which essentially says, I don't know everything. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to know more. Sure. Um, and there's, I think that comes into play when we talk about studying scripture, especially when we talk about, let's look at scripture that maybe is super familiar to us or scripture that we've read before, you know, or books we've read before. It's a saying that even though I've read this, even though this is familiar to me, there's still more to it. There's still depths or layers that I have not uh, encountered yet. And so the very act of studying is kind of a statement of, I admit my unknowing of yeah. something. And, and so I think that humility is what, to your point about the spirit, is what allows God then to step into that space and work. When we acknowledge that we don't know all there is to know about something yep. and are willing to then take the time to study it and learn more about it, I think that's where we can encounter it then. And the, the beautiful part about that is, again, if you're in Bible study with me on Wednesdays, then you know this and I say this a lot, but every time we come to the text, we're not the same, right? It's like right. it's like Pocahontas, right? The, what I love most about rivers is you can't step in the same river twice. Right. The same thing is where you're never the same when you come to the, to the text, whatever the text is, right? It's the, the Bible, whatever you're reading, if you're reading it for this intention of study and growth, you're never the same. So you're always, you always have the potential to grow in a different way and to find something new in it because you're coming from a different perspective, a different lens, and there's new chance of growth and new chance of um, deeper study because you've morphed, you've transformed, you're yeah. a whole new person. 
So maybe if you're doing study well, then it's also a mirror to learn more about yourself. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I when, love that. When we read scripture, scripture reads us, right? Yep. It's a living, living yep. dialogue. Yep. Okay. Talk to me a little bit about what, what are, what are practices? What are things that you do for study? What are, what are ways that you engage in study and be that with scripture, be that other ways? Like what are things that you do that you would classify as study? Well, I think first and foremost, get a really good study Bible. Yeah. Um, I think that's really helpful. I really enjoy the New Interpreter's Study Bible. Um, and But there are lots of others. Uh, so Study Bible, for sure. Um, they're really thick, so they can be really intimidating. Right. But they're so thick because they have a lot of footnotes and intro yep. notes you know, to the beginnings of each book. So that's super helpful. Um you know, I, along with study Bibles, there are obviously in, uh, commentaries on different books of the Bible sure. and different passages of scripture. So I would encourage that too. Um, you know, it's an, it's a nice place to start. Um, and it gives you, I think it gives you some easy, easily accessible information. Um, so that's, that's the first thing yeah. off the bat. Um, but you know, the other thing is I would look for Bible studies that are going on in your community, um, your church or whatever other type of place you might be, um, connected. I mean, look for places where there are folks who are gathering and talking about scripture outside of the worship, um, experience. And I think the importance of that is because in worship, in like the worship moment and kind of the structure that we often have around our worship, which is valid and necessary and practical. Um, there's not, you can't always get into all the information that's there. You know, I mean, when we do preach, uh, I think some of the (laughs) the biggest challenge is what do we include and what do we not include in a sermon? And there are just always things that kind of are left on the cutting room floor when it comes to crafting a good sermon floor. Yes. Yes. For worship. (laughs) So if there is a Bible study kind of that happens within your church community, then that's often a time where a pastor or another member of the community can dive in deeper into a scripture. Um, again, and, and reach and kind of touch on things that aren't able to be talked about just within a sermon. Sure. I fully agree. This is one of the reasons I love doing, like we do a Bible study mm-hmm. every Wednesday morning. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite things I do. Um, and I think it's so true because even when I, when I teach other things that aren't the Bible, what I've found is that I, I love the Bible. Don't get me wrong. Right. I think it's a great place to start. We're, we're Christians. This is the Christian Bible. Like this is what we've agreed upon. Right. Like these are the, a great starting place. Um, I've also found, and, and this came actually like, um, Dexter's here producing too. There was a time probably almost 10 years ago now, good Lord, we're getting old. Um, <laughs> where we used to do like a Tuesday morning book club. And I, I loved that as well because there was some sort of, um, real intentional study that took place that, let a, like it, it grew our mind, it grew our understanding, but then it really grew our, our friendships too. Right. And like everybody who was a part of that book club, we still stay connected with to some extent and, and some of them become like our best friends. Right. Um, there's some sort of growth that takes place through this study. That's way more about the intellect, way more than just intellectual. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I love growing intellectually with people, but, um, it's like what you talked about a minute ago, or like this idea of knowing, right. You become to, to really know yourself through study and then you become to know other people so much better, um, while you're learning together. And it almost doesn't, I'm going to say it doesn't matter what the medium is. It doesn't matter what you're studying. It probably does to some extent. If you were like, <laughs> I don't know if you're reading sports illustrated magazine, if it would like really get you to this point, but, um, you know, we would, we would often read some kind of like, like I'm going to call them like a pop theologian book or something like that, you know, like a, a Brian McLaren or something, whatever. Um, and it did, it just, it took us to this whole next level. So I'm a huge advocate of Bible study. I love Bible study. Um, but I also love this idea of a book club and a book study because you, you have this chance to dive deep into really, again, find yourself in a whole new way, but also grow relationships. And it's just this intentionality that moves beyond. So often it's, it's easy to say surface level with people. This is an easy invitation to go deeper. And I think that's what study is. Study is an, an invitation to go deeper. Yeah, I agree. Um, no, I remember. I mean, I had forgotten that we did that, and so that's a good right? reminder. But good you're right. Good breakfast, good study. Yeah. How could you be yeah. it? You know. Yeah. Well, and I and I think that also it's it's a um, two things actually. When you study anything, 
um, it expands your understanding of how really the whole world can be connected. Yeah. Because you can read something that is on one topic and even just a couple of lines or a couple of points can make you think of another topic yep. and you can make these then connections between two seemingly disparate ideas that allow you to actually, that enriches then your understanding of both of them. Mm -hmm. And so I do think any type of study can be helpful. I mean, I can't tell you the number of times that I've read like a novel and the novel says something that actually makes me think of a scripture sure. a passage or a story or something about God that actually like, like I said, enriches and deepens my experience kind of of both. Yep. So uh, one, I think studying anything to your point is great because again, it re reveals the interconnectedness of yep. so many things. But I also think that studying is somehow, um, for many people, it's like less emotional hmm. and that seems safer. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I can and see that. And so I think for many people, it's it's easier for them to be like, yeah, I'll go and study about something. Mm -hmm. And that's like an easier step for them to take than it is to be like, I'm going to go like immerse myself in this like relational experience, right? That might yeah. require a lot of me emotionally that I'm not prepared to give. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so it is also nice then to think of study as you know, kind of a, a threshold for folks to then have these relationships. That's a great um, mm -hmm. Because if you can, you know, go into something thinking, okay, I'm, an, I'm going to learn something about this topic. Yep. Then like, that's the baseline. And if you leave that and you get nothing else, you've learned about a topic and like, that's great. That's been enriching. But you can also do that. And in that environment, that's where you get to know people, like you sure. said, and you form these relationships. So, um, so yeah, I think study in general is helpful and certainly is a good first step for people who are, you know, exploring something, exploring yep. their faith, exploring a church, exploring a community, because um, it's a little less, again, kind of emotionally or yeah. it, it's a little less emotionally demanding. It's a little less vulnerable yep. to say I'm going to go study about something. Um and then last thing I want to say, well, I don't know what your other questions are, <laughs> but the <laughs> last thing that I'm thinking of that I want to say, yeah. um, you know, I was talking to like a 27 year old the other day and they, it, they were really saying how they want to learn more about the Bible mm -hmm. and the church and their faith and what we believe and how it all fits together. And I just appreciated so much the way that they express that desire because I do feel like we put sometimes a lot of emphasis on experience yeah. in a church, especially sure. around worship. Um, but there are, I mean, there's a whole group of us who, I mean, we've learned in formal settings our whole lives, right? We raise people to be in classrooms and in school settings and yeah. we place a lot of value on knowledge. And so if we ask people to suspend their knowledge when they walk into a church, yeah. then it doesn't connect with how they really experience the world in every other way. Mm -hmm. So to make sure that, and that's, it kind of brings me back to the original point where I think knowledge, learning, study is essential to being a disciple because it is part of how we were created yeah. to be curious and we're taught to to learn and investigate things and for that to be part of how, um, how we connect to things. So again, I think we can't suspend learning knowledge, you know, that kind of study work, um, for the sake of only an experience when it comes to church. Totally agree. I love that. And there's a whole commentary there on pedagogy and how we do learn and all that stuff, but that's for another time. Yes. We're, it's time to wrap up. Uh, Give us the the thirty second plug on on why people should join our our, our podcast if they are interested in studying the scriptures. Oh, because you and I are awesome. <laughs> First and foremost. First and foremost, we're amazing. Um, and no, humble, like you said, humble. yeah, I'm super humble. Yep. Um, no, but I I actually what I think is great about it is that we play off each other really well. Yep. Um, but we also bring like we've said, our own lens to it. Yeah. And so I think by 
joining us on a podcast where we're looking at scripture, you're going to already get then a variety of perspectives. And you're going to be able to see scripture already then from a variety of lenses, yeah. which will just help deepen your own experience. Um, and we are able to bring context and some information that we have. But I'll, the other thing I'll say is I am constantly surprised by how when we read scripture together, things pop out at me, yep. things come up for me in that scripture in our congreg in our conversation that I had not anticipated or planned to say or Same. thought about before. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's something that happens like in the moment where we are reading scripture together and talking about it. That really is, I would say the work of the spirit. There's that Holy spirit again. Yep. That's a good one. Awesome. Elizabeth, thank you for your time. Thanks for joining me this morning. You're welcome. Friends, we're, uh, that is an invitation to come join us on a podcast. It's called Scripture with Friends. It'll be available on anywhere you listen to podcasts coming up, I think next week, actually. So stay tuned for that. But uh, we're going to head on over to worship. So take a quick break here. Um, go warm up a coffee, whatever you need to do. We'll be back here um, in just a couple minutes. So thanks for joining us this morning.